Well, hello, Clacton. How are you doing? I must tell you, this is absolutely extraordinary. My name is Michael Heaver. I'm very proud to announce I'll be standing in this region, my home region that I grew up in. I live in Essex, and it is amazing to see so many of you come out here today and make history. And that is what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, make history on the 23rd of May. Thank you for coming out. The sun is out for us. And we really do need it, ladies and gentlemen. We really do need the Brexit party, don't we? Because I don't know about you, I feel like since 2016, all we've been done is talked down to, told we're thick, told we're stupid. My personal favourite, told we didn't know what we were voting for. Well, we use these European elections now to send a message. Not that we believe in Brexit as much as we did in 2016, but that we believe in it now more than ever. Are you with me? And I must say, I, I, I agree with a Conservative MP. I agree with Lucy Allen, uh, the Telford MP, who said yesterday that when she looked at the Brexit Party candidates, she described them as fantastic. And I think what you're seeing now from the left, from the right, from the business world, is a group of candidates for these European elections standing for the Brexit Party unlike anything we've seen before. The quality, the breadth, it's going to truly cause a political revolution at the ballot box on May the 23rd. We need all of you with the Corex boards, telling your friends, online, retweeting, whatever it takes to make sure that we win this election and send an unmistakable message to Westminster that we must leave the European Union. And you know, I made a youthful indiscretion. I know it happens. I truly believed the Prime Minister when she said a hundred times or more that we were going to leave on the 29th of March. I made the mistake of thinking that if the Prime Minister said that, surely, surely she couldn't go back on it, go back on our word. But I'm afraid she has. And now Theresa May, you know, we've had so many dates, the 30th of June, April the 12th. She's got more dates than an advent calendar and none of them mean anything anymore because she's broken her word to the people. So as I say, it's time to send an unmistakable message that absolutely makes it crystal clear. We believe in Brexit now more than ever. And I'm going to introduce you today to some truly remarkable, fantastic candidates that if elected as MEPs will help bring about the political change that we all want to see. So I'll ask you one more time, are you with us? Can we count on your support? So I'm going to introduce the first European election uh, candidate joining me on the stage now. It's Matthew Patton. Thank you. Give, him a, give him a warm welcome. Wow, is all I can say about this. I can see people up there. Hello? Hello? I can see people right at the back. Hello? When we voted for Brexit, what did we think Brexit meant? Brexit means... Sorry, I can't hear you. What does Brexit mean? What does leave mean? I, I live in Manningtree and I was really proud to be part of Tendering District Council as a Conservative for many, many years. And when I believe in something, when I trust what people say, then I know that that's what they're going to do. But has there ever been a bigger betrayal of trust of people than what we're seeing at the moment? Has there ever been a bigger betrayal of trust of what we're seeing at the moment? And what are we going to do about it? We're going to absolutely turn up at the ballot boxes and vote for what we voted for. And what we voted for was Brexit. What do we vote for? Brexit. We have to vote. You have to vote. It's the most important thing. We need to send a message. And as I say, somebody who's lived in tendering for 30 years I'm so proud to have been asked by Nigel and the Brexit Party 
to be a Brexit Party candidate. So we all really appreciate the time that you've taken to come today. I know that we all really are so grateful for your incredible support. And I absolutely promise you, hand on heart, as a local boy, that what we are going to do is cause an absolute revolution and we're going to make sure that Brexit means Brexit. Thank you very much. I told you, didn't I? I told you the quality of candidates you are going to see for this party standing at this election is going to be exceptional. I'm going to introduce you to another now standing with me in this region, the eastern region. It's June Mummery. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Well, my name's June Mummery, and I own the Fish Auctioneers in Lowestoft, and I represent the fishing industry. Have I any of my fishermen here today? Yes. I am absolutely delighted to be a part of the Brexit Party and to be a candidate for this wonderful region that we live in. Um, all I can say to you is, with fishing, you bring back jobs. And we have been left behind in our co coastal communities. Once we take back control of our waters and the fish, we can not only just bring back the fishing, but lots and lots of jobs. Let's not forget, one job at sea is eight on land. Once we take control of the fish, we'll need boats built. That will bring back our shipbuilders. We had two of the biggest shipbuilding companies in my hometown, Alostov. They've gone. So once we take the control and we sort this mess out, I guarantee you, if you vote for me, I will deliver the fishing industry and the jobs that are needed on the east coast of England. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. I hope that's got you fired up. And of course, that's, you know, that's it now. Oh, no, there's, there's one more speaker. Sorry, 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 sorry. I nearly forgot. One more speaker. Um, a chap you may have heard, may have seen potentially, I don't know. Uh, a man, I think, that has already changed British politics more than any other. But one that moving forward is going to change it even more and deliver what we all voted for. He is the governor of Brexit. He is the godfather of the Leave movement. He is Mr. Nigel Farage. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Clacton! Do you know, I was here three days before the referendum. I walked down the street. I came down here onto the pier. And despite the fact we'd been told that if we voted Brexit, do you remember? Half a million jobs would be lost. Companies would leave us. In fact, George Osborne, the Chancellor at the time, told us, that plagues of black locusts would descend upon our land if we dared vote Brexit. The American president told us we'd be at the back of the queue. And despite everything, despite the threats, what did we do? What did Clacton do? We went out and we voted to take back control of our country. And we've been told... Whatever the result, it would be implemented. A year later, there was a general election. And the Conservative Party and the Labour Party both said, vote for us and we will implement Brexit. Then, 498 members of Parliament voted for Article 50, which said we would leave on the 29th of March at 11 p.m. with or without a deal. And we have now openly and willfully been betrayed by our government and by our political class and we will not 
stand aside. We will not roll over. We will not let them get their way. We are fighting back. Our politicians may not believe in Britain, but I think our people do believe in Britain. Let me ask you, do you believe in Britain? Do you believe we're good enough to make our own laws and run our own country? Do you believe that this political class, that these two parties, that Parliament now need to be swept aside and replaced by better people? Well, that is what we are going to do. That is what we intend to do. And I think the launch of the Brexit party has been the most incredible, phenomenal success in the space of the last two weeks. And I'll tell you why. We're optimistic. We believe Brexit offers the most fantastic opportunity to this country. We are supposed to be, we are supposed to be a democratic nation. Indeed, Westminster has been known for centuries as being the mother of parliaments. And this campaign, this great battle upon which we're embarked, isn't just now about Brexit. It's about whether we are a democratic country and whether we have trust that exists between our leaders and between ordinary people. This campaign is about our standing in the world about whether people respect us. I mean, can you imagine if in, a, in an African country an election had been overturned, there'd be uproar. We'd be calling for the United Nations to be sent in. And yet it's happening in our own nation. We will not put up with it. We are gonna fight back and I'll tell you something else. We are going to win. Brexit is an opportunity. I was asked earlier by a journalist, what would Brexit do for a town like Clacton? Well, Clacton, of course, is rather special. Clacton is the most patriotic and the most Eurosceptic town in the whole of this country. Well done, you. So what would Brexit do for Clacton? I'll tell you what it would do. It'll make us proud of who we are as a nation once again, and you can't put a price on that. Pride is a really important thing. And June talked about jobs and fishing. Well, if you want to see what Brexit will do for Clacton, just look out there. It's called the North Sea, and half of it should be ours, not to be shared with the Dutch or the Danes or anybody else. It's ours. It's our birthright. And I'm struck by the quality of people that are now stepping up to the plate and standing for the Brexit party, supporting the Brexit party. If you'd said to me two months ago that Anne Widdecombe... That wasn't hard, that one, was it? If you'd said to me two months ago that Anne Widdecombe would even leave the Conservative Party, I wouldn't have believed you. If you'd said to me last week that Anne Widdecombe would actually decide to stand as a candidate for the Brexit Party, I wouldn't have believed you. But that's the news today, and I think it is absolutely fantastic news that Anne Widdecombe has got principle... Anne Whittingham has got guts. Anne Whittingham has got courage. And it's not just her, of course. We have a rather famous sister of a Conservative Member of Parliament by the name of Annunziata, who will be standing for us in the East Midlands. But it's not just Conservatives that are coming to this cause. Because, you see, the issue of Brexit, the issue of whether we're to be a democratic nation, the issue of whether we're to be able to reach out across the world and choose our own friends. And I can't think by the way of a better place of starting to rebuild our friends in the world than to re-engage properly with that group of 52 countries 
who share with us a language, a history, a common legal system, our real friends in the world, ladies and gentlemen, live and work in the Commonwealth. Let's re-engage with the Commonwealth. And while we're at it, while we're at it, perhaps we ought to think about re-engaging with another country in the world that is not part of the Commonwealth, but speaks English, with whom we have the closest ties economically, militarily, in intelligence sharing. We are the biggest investor in their country. They are the biggest investor in our country. And the sooner we're freed, the sooner we're freed from being governed by Mr. Tusk. Monsieur Barnier. And of course, the kingpin himself, who isn't much cop after lunch, Jean-Claude Juncker. Hasn't their sheer arrogance during these negotiations summed up why in this great nation of ours that gave so much in the past that we should not be governed by unelected bureaucrats in Brussels or anywhere else in the world? Let's think about, let's pause for a moment and think about those generations that went before us. Think up on the seafront at Walton on Nays, the statue that was put up there a few years ago, the first ever statue in this country put up to a private soldier, Columbine, the man who won the Victoria Cross and lost his life from Walton on Nays in defending this country and those that did it again in 1939 to 45 and many subsequent conflicts. We made those sacrifices so that we and the rest of Europe could be free, proud, independent nations. And even if our politicians don't believe in it, surely folks, you agree with me, we must honor them, give our children and grandchildren a start and be a free nation. This issue, this issue of whether we're a democracy, of whether we're independent, whether we're self-governing, and whether, by the way, we're in charge. Sovereignty does not rest with our members of parliament. Sovereignty rests with us, the people. We are the masters. They are the servants. They've forgotten that. And on the 23rd of May, I'm going to make them remember who the bosses are. This issue, this issue is not about whether you're on the right of politics or whether you're on the left of politics. And yes, sure, we've got an Inziana Rees Mogg, and sure, we've got Anne Whittacombe, but equally, we've got Claire Fox yesterday coming out for the party writing in today's Daily Mail. This isn't about, this isn't about left or right. It's about right or wrong. That is what this issue is about. And what we are doing in the Brexit party is we are forming an alliance. We're putting aside whatever things we may disagree on because there are some fundamental things that we do agree on. We believe in our country. We believe in our people. We believe in our future. We believe we have a great, great opportunity as a free nation to do so much better than our current crop of politicians are doing. The 23rd of May, the 23rd of May, I'm not asking you on the 23rd of May to go out and vote as a protest, although there is much to protest about. I'm asking you on May the 23rd, sorry, to go out and vote with a positive agenda in your mind. I want you to go out and vote knowing that we can win this, knowing that we can win this election, knowing that it will be a first historic step towards fundamentally changing and reshaping politics in our country. We have two parties, two major parties 
who serve nobody but themselves and their own career interests. Politics is broken in Britain and the only people that can fix it and mend it are not us on this platform. Sure, we put our heads over the parapet, but we can't do it without you. We need you to help us, to support us, to join us, to spread the message, to put, to put these up on your front doors and on Come on, let's see them. Let's see them. Let's see them. We want you to help us to change politics for good and we can do it. I believe the time, if ever there was, for great change is now. And I know Britain needs the Brexit Party and the Brexit Party needs you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Well, how good was that? One more time, please, for Mr. Nigel Farage. Come on. I'll take the, I'll take the back. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support, guys. May the 23rd is the day for the European elections. Now, We've got some questions from the audience, which I'm going to ask our panel to answer. We've got John from Tendring. Has our present government destroyed democracy? Yes. <laughs> well, not wrong, is it? I mean, come on. I thought you wanted politicians to give straight answers. That was pretty straight, wasn't it? Look, I cannot ever think of a time... I can't think of a time ever when the bond of trust that needs to exist between government, parliament and the people has ever been wider. They are willfully refusing to represent us. They are openly lying to us when they tell us, when they tell us that they'll respect our wishes. And perhaps the greatest deception of all is Mrs. May's deal. This is not a deal. And it's nothing to do with Mrs. May. It's a new European treaty that was drafted by Monsieur Barnier with Mrs. Merkel looking over his shoulder. We didn't vote Brexit to leave one European treaty to sign up to another European treaty which in some ways is even worse than the one we currently have. And yet, this deceptive Prime Minister and her Cabinet have attempted to set it to the nation as this is Brexit. That treaty is not Brexit. That treaty would leave us trapped, perhaps forever, inside European Union rules. And it's supported, of course, by your local MP, Giles Watling. Here you are. One of the biggest leave towns in the country, and you're represented by a Remain MP. Doesn't that sum up everything that is wrong in this country today? Doesn't that sum up why we need the Brexit party? Doesn't it sum up why we need to win on the 23rd of May? The next question is from Julia, who's uh, in Clacton. And I think, you know, I think it's an important question because there's a lot of people asking this, unfortunately. Is it even worth voting anymore? Oh, well, I, you can all join in. Look, I tell you what. I tell you what. If we do nothing, and if we leave this to the Labour and Conservative parties, there will be no Brexit. We were told... We were leaving on the 29th of March. We didn't. We were told we were leaving on the 12th of April. We didn't. We were told we would be leaving by the 30th of June. We won't be. Now we're told we'll leave on the 31st of October. Halloween day. Trick or treaty. I don't know. If we leave our politicians 
not fearful of the electorate's vote. They will continue to kick the can down the road because they believe in so doing. We will become demoralized. We will give up. And if we say it's not worth voting because we voted Brexit and they haven't delivered it, then they will win. And we will go on being controlled by this ghastly set of institutions in Brussels who frankly do this nation no good. We have got to say to our friends, to our neighbours, we're sorry that we have to do this again, but that is just how dishonest our political class are. If you want Brexit, you've got to go out and vote Brexit Party. It matters that much. Another question here from Sandra from Great Clacton. If you win the European elections, and by the way, the bookies are slashing the odds all the time. If you win the European elections, how does that actually help Brexit? Well, I did go into a bookmaker's two weeks ago. Because amongst my many well-advertised vices, which keep the cartoonists busy, I do like a bet. I can't predict what is going to happen over the course of the next month. But I have a feeling when I was walking through the street earlier today that whatever determination I saw in Clacton back in 2016, my feeling is that actually we're even more determined now than we were. And that that does not just apply to leave voters because there are many remain voters who say to me, Nigel, we believe in democracy. We believe in this country. If we don't deliver Brexit, this country will never be the same place again. Now, I'm told that it's a mugs game. It's a mugs game to predict whether you'll win an election or not. I haven't come out of semi-retirement to muck about. Of course we're going to win! And what difference will it make? What difference will it make? Well, let me tell you, if, I'm a, if we get those results and we've won these elections and won them well, those MPs in Westminster will be fearing for their own careers, fearing for their own futures, because they know that there'll be a general election coming down the road. And if they weren't certain if in Westminster you're not certain whether the Brexit party will be contesting the next general election, maybe you were hoping we were just going to be a one-race wonder and then disappear. Well, I've got news for all those members of Parliament. Unless you listen to us, we will replace you at that general election. It's as simple as that. Just a couple more questions, we'll try and squeeze them in now. Sue with a quick one, which I'll answer rapid fire. She asked, will the Brexit party stand an MEP in this area? Yes, we will. I'm one of the candidates. Here's another. And you can rest assured that you guys in Clacton and beyond and across the entire country will be able to vote for the Brexit party on the 23rd of May. Now, Mike from Wheelie with a big question. How do you plan to change the two party system? The way, to change the, the way to change the two-party system is to break the two-party system. It is not serving its purpose. It is not carrying out our wishes. It frankly is not fit for purpose in any way at all. We need fresh life in British democracy. And I believe this amazing alliance of men and women that have come together under this banner are going to be the catalyst for a fundamental realignment of British politics. We need a parliament that reflects the mood of the nation, not a parliament that treats us with contempt and thinks it can get away with it. Well, the message from Clacton Pier today is loud and it is clear. You will not get away with treating us with contempt. We simply won't stand for it. Gary uh, is the next one to ask a question. He asks, do you think the European elections will go ahead? If not, what happens to the Brexit party? 
Well, there is some speculation that many in Westminster now are beginning to regret kicking the can down the road because they're slightly fearful of what might happen in the European elections. I can't imagine why, can you? Nominations close at four o'clock tomorrow. At four o'clock tomorrow, across the entire United Kingdom, in the 12 electoral districts that make up our representation to the European Parliament. Can't believe I'm saying this. I've spent 20 years trying to do myself out of a job and here I am applying again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but at four o'clock tomorrow, the lists of candidates will be published and the race will be on. The election will be happening. I don't think it's possible, once you start an election, to stop an election. After all, they've robbed us of one vote already, haven't they? The only way they could stop the elections from happening is if Mrs May does a deal with Mr Corbyn. It's interesting to get the crowd reaction to various names. Let me try a new one on you. Anna Subri. <laughs> the only way they can stop this election is if Labour and the Conservatives get together and sign us up to a permanent customs union. Sign us up to single market rules. And that's the only way they can stop these European elections. Let me tell you something. If they do that, in order to stop us hurting them electorally on the 23rd of May, if they do that to us, then support for the Brexit party will go even higher than it would do anyway. They don't believe in this. We believe in this. This is a party to deliver Brexit. This is the party to change British politics. Please, please help us. Will you help us? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you know, I think big things are ahead. We need your support. Please grab a Corex board, give them to your friends, tell them about it, look out for further events, and together, let's change politics for good. Let's see those banners up. One more cheer for Nigel. Hey! Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys.